using a chair to pull herself up. This woman walks slowly in great pain. The body brace she is wearing in support of her spine shows that she is suffering. Ms. Mangosana Motswane's black card reads that she has a problem of difficulty in walking due to disc herniation and spinal stenosis and is booked for an operation. This is the medical report explaining the severity of the case. These are the x-rays explaining the affected spine. All the way from South Africa, Ms. Motswane has come to the Synagogue Church of All Nations, believing that God Almighty will put an end to her problems. Let's hear from her. My name is Mangosana Motswane. I'm 55 years old and I come from South Africa. I have a difficulty in walking due to um, disc herniation and uh, uh, spinal stenosis and I'm using body brace and I am booked for operation. I'm unable to work, I haven't been working for the whole year. I depended on my children, and they're very small, 12 years and 6 years. My son had to leave the wife to come and help me. They clean the house, they cook, they do almost everything for me, including, you know, help me. Lately I can't be able to wash myself, but it was a difficult thing to do. My 12-year daughter used to do it for me. I had been to the hospital which, where I saw different um, specialists and uh, I invited the intercessors to pray for me. I've done almost everything to be able to get help. But uh, I was shocked when I was told that I have to go for another operation due to the fact that there is a nerve that was touched when the operation happened and it's causing a lot of extra um, problems in my life. And what's the purpose of the, the body brace? It helps me to, it, it brings the spine back and if I'm not wearing it like when I walk, I feel like I, I, there's a sound behind when I walk and I get tired, so I, can't, I can't sit long, I can't stand long, I can't walk long. We can see an x-ray beside you. Can you tell us uh, what does this x-ray show? Okay, the, this one shows the, what happened in my system when they did the first operation because the discs were removed and I couldn't, actually I couldn't stand, I couldn't walk. Um, so they had to hold the spine so that I can be able to stand up and be able to walk. But after some time, uh, they picked up that uh, on the next one, that the, the L3 and L4 disc is also affected. I believe that Jesus will use uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua um, to heal me. Healing takes place as the power of God is released upon Miss Motswane. The body brace is removed and one more touch from above finally frees Miss Motswane from affliction. Thank you, Jesus. She is healed. Yes, to God be the glory. That was a wonderful miracle that we just watched right now. Well, we thank God Almighty. Madam, you're welcome in Jesus' name. Tell us your name and share with us your wonderful testimony. My name is Mankosana Mtswani. I'm 55 years old. I'm from South Africa. Yes, share your testimony with us. Um, I, I came here uh, due to difficulty in walking, especially when I walked, there were clicks behind my, in my spine, and that put a lot of fear in me because I didn't know when I'm going to break. So I decided to come to Synagogue Church of All Nations, 
Okay, now before you came to the Synagogue Church of Foundations, as we watched earlier on, we saw that you had the problem of difficulty in walking due to discarnation. And um, tell us, how did this problem affect you? And what do you do as a profession? Tell us, how was the problem then? I'm a banker by profession, and I couldn't work uh, since the accident until today. And uh, my children, I had to depend on my children for almost everything. Uh, like I said, even my son um, had to come to be with me in order for me to have support at home. And where did you go in search of a solution to um, the problem? I've been in different hospitals, seen difficult, uh, different specialists, but still I, I couldn't really get help. I invited intercessors because I believe in prayer, but the thing still persists. Okay, tell us, when you went to the hospital, what did the doctors tell you and what recommendations were you given? When I went to the doctor for what I thought was my final a visitation and release, I was told that um, uh, there's a, now a different problem in my spine because in the middle of it, the L3 and 4 is now dislocated and I must go for another operation. And we saw you, you were using a medical device, what was it? That is the body brace, it supports your spine so that when you are standing, you can be able to stand when you walk, it protects you in a way. So was there a solution to this problem you were having then? Not really. It was there just for support, like the name itself, but it didn't help me. I went for exercises. I did all these things, but they couldn't help. Okay, to God be the glory. So tell us when you came to the Synagogue Church of All Nations, what happened? So I came to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. I was privileged to be on the prayer line, and the man of God prayed for me. But before he prayed for me, the lady that was standing before me, the one that couldn't hear, was like shouting and saying, I'm healed, eh? I'm healed, I'm healed. Man of God, I can hear loud and clear. And immediately she said that, I, I, I think, I, I believe I received my healing then because I said I'm healed. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And the man of God, I got a chance for a man of God to come and pray for me. I wanted to scream and say, man of God, this, man of God, that. But I, I, I just freezed. But he came, he buckled off the brace and he touched, he touched me at the back, but it felt like a hammer. It felt like he used a big hammer, and in my mind I said, oh my God, I came to be healed, now it's like my spine is broken now. <laughs> because the clicks that I used to hear, they happened so quick, more like something has been aligned. I can't explain it. It's, my body was like, okay. That's why you see, even when I walk, I was shocked if will I be able to walk because I just received a hammer behind me. But behold, God healed me. Hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> so you mean immediately the man of God came to you and he touched your back. You felt and heard that sound, and it was as if your spine was being aligned back into position. Yes, it was the very same thing that I feel when I walk. It was like it's put back in order. Mm. That those clicks, but yo, it felt like a hammer, mm. big one. That is going to smash and finish me. But it was just the power of God finalizing. Mm. Like they say, when you are here, it's 50%. When he lay his hand, 100%, everything was done. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. So now, after that anointed touch, now you can do all the things you could not do before. Yes, ma'am, I can. Wow, to God be the glory. Put your hands together for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, to the glory of God, people are watching and listening to you. Can you show us now what you can do now, the things you could not do before? I can now? walk and I can walk even fast. I don't hear any sound. I can walk nicely, majestically. I don't fear anything. And I can turn. 
like that, I can go down without any pain. Wow. Hallelujah. Now, for the benefit of people listening to you and watching you, many people have that similar problem and they don't know how to get out of it. What advice do you have for them? I want to tell everyone watching at home that when the men of God truly say, when someone is getting healed, tap into the anointing. Because there's no barrier. I, I, it's not because I was in synagogue church of all nations. It is the belief in my heart that made me healed before he even laid his hand on me. Mm. So I want to advise them that believe in God. What he did for me, he will do for you too. Amen. Thank you very much for that wonderful advice. Indeed, she's letting us know that we should put our trust in God Almighty because that is the greatest decision you can make in life. Well, we thank God Almighty for what the Lord has done for you, and we also want to encourage you that you should go and make us for the standard for your life so that that healing will remain permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Y hemos escuchado el maravilloso testimonio de esta mujer que vino de Sudáfrica aquí a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones con un terrible problema de dificultad para caminar. Ella estaba sufriendo de estenosis de columna, así como de hernia discal. Esto le afectaba muchísimo, ella no podía moverse ni hacer sus actividades diarias. Tenía que ser asistida por sus hijos, en especial por una hija de 12 años que tenía incluso que asearla, ella no podía cocinar ni ocuparse. Tuvo que dejar incluso su trabajo como banquera debido a este ter terrible dolor de espalda. Ella asistió a diferentes hospitales y especialistas, pero no le aportaban ninguna solución. Eh, se había sometido ya a una primera operación y las consecuencias no habían sido buenas para ella. Le ofrecieron eh, programarla para una segunda operación y ella rechazó esta posibilidad y decidió recurrir a Dios y venir aquí a la sinagoga e iglesia de todas las naciones. El profeta Tibilloso, el hombre de Dios, oró por ella, tocó su espalda e ella inmediatamente sintió como todo se recolocara en su espalda. Sintió ese toque ungido de Dios. Se levantó y empezó a caminar majestuosamente para la gloria de Dios. Desde ese momento ella ha recuperado su vida. No siente ningún dolor, puede correr, puede agacharse, puede hacer todas sus actividades sola y sin ayuda. Y viene hoy a darle la gloria a Dios por esta sanidad. Ella nos aconseja que creamos y que cuando estén viendo en Manuel TV, espectadores, atrapen la unción porque la unción está disponible. Que crean en Dios porque así como lo ha hecho con ella, también puede sanarle a usted. Así que damos toda la gloria a Dios en el nombre de Jesús por este maravilloso testimonio. Téléspectateurs, nous venons toujours d'entendre le merveilleux témoignage de cette femme qui vient de l'Afrique du Sud. Le problème qui l'a emmené à la synagogue église de toutes les nations, ce fut une hernie discale, une sténose de la colonne vertébrale qui a causé une difficulté à marcher. Elle devait toujours porter un corset lombaire pour soutenir son dos. Elle dit qu'elle fut aussi programmée pour une opération dont la première fut un échec total, causant plus de mal que de bien. Elle dit que voilà qu'elle marchait, il y avait toujours des craquements dans sa colonne vertébrale causant des douleurs atroces. Elle fut à la recherche de solutions de plusieurs hôpitaux, des spécialistes, physiothérapie, mais toujours le problème persista. Elle dit quand on une bancaire, ceci affecta sa carrière et ses enfants devaient toujours l'aider. Les jeunes enfants âgés de 4 ans, 12 ans, devaient cuisiner pour elle, prendre soin d'elle. Et même que son fils a dû euh, abandonner sa maison et venir prendre soin d'elle. Elle dit que voilà, c'est donc pour qu'elle venue à la Scoane, synagogue de toutes les nations, cherchant la face de Dieu. Elle dit voilà, le prophète Sibi Joshua pria pour elle. Elle ressentit comme un coup de marteau géant dans sa colonne vertébrale, comme si sa colonne vertébrale fut brisée en petits morceaux et ensuite rassemblée, régénérée. Elle dit que sa colonne vertébrale fut alignée quand le prophète Sibi Joshua pria pour elle après sa délivrance. La puissance de Jésus-Christ fut guérie. Maintenant, elle peut faire toutes les choses qu'elle ne pouvait plus faire auparavant. Il n'y a plus de craquements, plus de douleurs. Maintenant, elle s'exerce librement. Les spectateurs vous encouragent à tout le monde de faire une requête d'onction que la distance n'est pas une barrière. Ce que Dieu a fait pour elle, Dieu le fera pour vous. Les spectateurs, restez connectés pour la suite et rendons gloire à Dieu pour tous les témoignages. Let us... Segundo testimonio. Mrs. Dorcas Kanashirai has come all the way from Zambia to seek divine solution from the master healer, Jesus Christ. The medical report from the Ministry of Health in Zambia states the diagnosis of lumbar and cervical spondylosis, which have caused constant pain and stiffness of the neck. 
the neck collar she has to wear on a daily basis. My name is Adoka Simohau Kwashrai. I come from Zambia. I have the stiff neck and the de degeneration of my spine, which is causing me lumbar spondylosis. I'm using the neck collar. I'm using it to balance my neck. I can't walk. I can't carry my baby. I can't sweep. I can't cook in the house. I have been to the hospital and I went to the university teaching hospital. I believe Jesus will heal me. We we'll pray and believe with you that God Almighty is going to heal you and deliver you from this problem of Steve Neck in Jesus' name. Amen. Under the influence of the Holy Spirit, Prophet TB Joshua prays for Mrs. Dorcas, and the lightning power of God flows through his faculties to restore her health in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. As Mrs. Dorcas, you can see her walking freely to the glory of God. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So she has come back this week to share her wonderful testimony and experience of the glory of God. So right now, let us hear from her. You're very welcome here today. Please introduce yourself to us, your name and where you're from. My name is Adokas Muhao Kwashrai Mangena from Zambia. Originally, I'm from Swaziland. Wonderful. And please share with us your testimony, uh, beginning with what the problem was that you were having. Mm, the problem which brought me here to Synagogue Church of All Nations. I had the problem of stiff neck due to lumbar spondylosis and the cervical spondylosis. I went to the hospital. I was using the neck collar. I went to the hospital, the doctors decided to give me the neck collar to use to balance my neck because I could not walk, I could not turn my neck, I could not sit for a long time, I could not walk for a long time, stand for a long time, it was very difficult. There was nothing, every job in the house I could ask for somebody to help me. And uh, where were some of the places you went to for solution in the past? I went to the hospitals, uh, three hospitals, reaching at the highest hospital, which is University Teaching Hospital. Okay, tell us, what was your experience uh, when Prophet T.B. Joshua prayed for you last Sunday? Amen. When Prophet T.B. Joshua touched me, uh, first of all, uh, the neck, it was paining, but where I used to feel more pain, it was my shoulder. I could not lift my hands. I was surprised, Prophet T.B. Joshua, I was putting my neck collar, I expected him to touch on the neck collar, but he went straight where there was more pain to me, which was a bit surprised. The moment he touched my shoulders, all that heavy thing, like I'm cutting a bag of cement, went, I felt free, I could walk. My back was like free, I could run, I could walk, everything, numbness gone. Let's clap for Jesus Christ. <laughs> and can you now demonstrate for us what you could now do that you couldn't do before? I couldn't. I could not turn my neck like this. Like this, I could not turn my neck like this. It was very difficult. I could not bend like this. Now I can bend. Walking was very heavy. Now I can walk. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Amen. Christ. I can walk freely. I can walk freely. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. So there you have it. She was having the problem of cervical and lumbar spondylosis, using a neck collar after receiving prayer. She is now completely free. Can you tell us, what is your advice for people around the world? People around the world, you should not depend on advice from somebody else who cannot give you solution. Only God. 
can help you. Have faith. Today, as man of God prays, you should touch the screen. Here, when you are around here, if man of God touches you, I believe you will go free like I am now. Les spectateurs, nous voulons toujours entendre le merveilleux témoignage de cette femme, un témoignage de guérison qui avait de la Zambie. Elle dit que le, prof, euh, le problème qui l'a emmené à la synagogue de toutes les nations fut la raideur du cou, dû à une spondylose cervicale et spondylose lombaire. Elle dit qu'elle utilisait une minerve afin d'équilibrer son cou. Ceci affecta sa vie. Elle dit que voilà, elle n'était pas libre, ne pouvant pas marcher bien, ni se pencher, ni bouger. Elle dit qu'elle avait toujours des douleurs, ce fut un fardeau. Et c'est là qu'elle a pris la décision de venir à la synagogue de toutes les nations cherchant la face de Dieu. Pourquoi Parce qu'elle est partie dans l'hôpital, en hôpital, à la recherche de solutions mais en vain, toujours, pas de solution, pas de soulagement. Mais elle dit que dès que le prophète Sibi Joshua pria pour elle, l'imposa les mains, la douleur quitta son corps instantanément. Elle dit qu'elle n'avait plus de douleur, en gloire à Dieu, maintenant elle arrive à se pencher, elle peut bouger son cou, chose qu'elle ne pouvait pas faire auparavant. Des spectateurs, rendons gloire à Dieu, notre Dieu Tout-Puissant, d'avoir fait accomplir ce merveilleux témoignage de la vie de cette femme. Y hemos escuchado el maravilloso testimonio de esta mujer que viene de, de Zambia. Ella llegó a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones sufriendo un problema de cuello rígido y de degeneración en su columna, lo cual le causaba una espondilosis cervical, así como una espondilosis lumbar. Ella estaba usando un collarín como única solución. Fue a diferentes hospitales, pero no pudieron otorgarle una solución más que un collarín para poder sujetar su cuello. Dice que se hallaba en mucho dolor, que no podía girar su cuello, que no podía estar de pie mucho tiempo, ni siquiera sentada, que no podía caminar libremente. Decidió venir a la Escoan y recibió la oración, el toque ungido del profeta Tibi Joshua. Ella dice que en cuanto el hombre de Dios le atocó, eh, se le retiró el collarín e inmediatamente fue libre de todo dolor para la gloria de Dios. Ahora puede hacer sus actividades diarias, puede caminar normalmente y viene a darle la gloria a Dios. Continuamos con más testimonios para la gloria de Dios. Manténganse conectados. So we thank God. and has been using hearing aids for the last 10 years. Her medical report shows the poor results of tests performed on both right and left ears, diagnosing her with bilateral hearing loss and recommending the use of hearing aids in order for her to hear the world in which she lives. A look into her ears shows a hearing aid lodged tightly into both her right and left ear. Desperate to hear again, she has come to the arena of liberty for God's divine intervention. Let us listen to her. My name is Beatrice Akach. I'm from Kenya and I'm age 57 years. Please, madam, can you tell us what is the problem that has brought you to the synagogue Church of All Nations today? I have the problem of hearing loss and I'm using hearing aids in both ears. I have had this problem for the last 10 years. And tell us, where have you been in search of solution to this problem? I didn't hear. What effort have you made? Where have you been in search of solution to this problem? I have been to many ear, nose and throat doctors uh, seeking solution to the ear hearing loss because I used to work in a very um, busy office in the UN as a finance officer and I participated uh, in uh, 
uh, mid-level meetings, and I was not able to do that. So I sought help from many doctors in Nairobi. I sought help from a doctor in South Africa, and all they recommended to me was that if I did not want surgery, then uh, I could only use hearing aids. I, I cannot communicate with my children because they will not uh, get me to hear what they are telling me. So they have like uh, abandoned talking to me altogether. They say, mom, you can't hear even if we talk. So it's uh, painful again. It affected my job negatively. I was a senior uh, staff of the UN before I retired. And this was uh, one of the reasons that I retired. I felt, uh, I felt alone, like now I cannot even socialize. I ask people to repeat themselves many times and uh, they make me feel like I'm a nuisance. The doctor recommended hearing aids for me um, just to enhance the hearing. Without the hearing aids, I cannot hear at all. How did you know about the Synagogue Church of All Nations? I knew about the Synagogue Church of All Nations from friends of mine in Arusha where I used to work for the UN International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. They are the ones who introduced me to uh, SCORN. Coming to the Synagogue Church of All Nations today, what do you believe God Almighty would do for you? I believe that God Almighty is able to heal me. He's the healer. And I'm here today knowing that my healing has come. Amen. So right now, Madam, today we want you to bring out the hearing aids. After answering a few questions, she removes her hearing aids from both ears. How uncomfortable the last 10 years must have been with these intrusive devices lodged in her ears. So viewers, uh, the woman has removed the hearing aids. As we can see, the two hearing aids with her right now being removed. So we are going to ask her questions so that people watching and listening can know that the woman here cannot hear without the hearing aids. So madam, tell us your name. I, I couldn't hear what you are saying, but I cannot remember what you are saying. We want you to tell us your name and where you are from. How old are you, madam? I cannot hear the, I cannot make out the words. Man of God, please help me, help me. I have hearing loss. I cannot participate in conversations with my children. I, I, I was forced to leave work at the UN because of my hearing loss. I hear, I use hearing aids on both ears. I'm so sorry. Oh please help me. Please help me. I can't hear. I have to read the written script. Help. Ce fort de la perte de l'écoute, utilisant des appareils auditifs. Il travaille à l'oreille nue et à cause de cela, cela dérange son travail. Falling under the influence of the Holy Spirit, Mrs. Akach shakes and trembles as the spiritual operation takes place repairing all that has been damaged in her system through the name of Jesus Christ. She rises to her feet, transformed. Thank you. Um, what is your name? My name is Beatrice, Beatrice Akach. Thank you. Thank you. I can't hear. I can't hear now. I can't hear. I can't hear. Esta mujer no podía escuchar, pero está escuchando para la gloria de Dios. I can't hear. I can't hear. I can't hear. I can't hear. I can't Shall we put our hands together louder for Jesus? Put your hands together for Jesus. If it were only Jesus could have done this. Put your hands together louder, I said, for the miracle working God. Hey. 
we have just watched the screen of our television and seen how this mighty miracle took place in the life of the sister. She came here with a terrible uh, problem of total hearing loss. And today, she's totally healed. Just let us hear from her because she's here direct uh, live in our midst, a living testimony to the miraculous power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, madam, you're very much welcome once again to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Can you just tell us your name, where you're from, and go on and share with us your wonderful testimony. My name is Beatrice Akaj. I am from Kenya. I am a former staff member of the UN. I came to the Synagogue Church of All Nations to get my healing from hearing loss. That's the reason I came here last Sunday. Okay. Before you came to the Synagogue Church of All Nations, can you just share with us how this problem started and for how long did you suffer this terrible uh, hearing loss? The history of my problem goes back to the time I was 14 years of age. I contracted TB from a village boarding school that I used to attend. And I underwent treatment for TB with streptomycin for a period of 18 months, 18 consecutive months, I completed my treatment for TB. At the age of 48, I noticed that I lost my hearing. And at that point, the doctors I consulted recommended hearing aids for me. So for the last 10 years, I have been using hearing aids in both ears because the doctor said uh, the, dam the, the, the nerves in my ears were damaged by the treatment I got for TB. So can you tell us how uh, this, uh, what effect was the use of these hearing aids recommended by the doctor? I used the hearing aids for 10 years and, and the hearing aids never helped me. This hearing aid that you see here did not replace my hearing. They did not restore my hearing. Instead, the hearing got worse as time went on. And you said uh, you're a former UN worker. Can you explain how this affected your career uh, as a UN worker? As I continued to use them, um, they didn't help me at all. I got frustrated because I could not participate in conversations. I could not participate in office discussions. I was really desperate. I was really frustrated. Even with the hearing aids, I could not get my hearing back. I lived such an isolated, such frustrated and depressed life. These hearing aids never helped me okay. until I got here and I was healed. Okay, hallelujah. Yes, sir. You said for 10 years you suffered embarrassment, lived a life of isolation as a United Nations worker. As you said, it really affected her. She could not participate in any meetings or converse uh, effectively with her colleagues at work. So that was a problem you were in for 10 horrible years. So tell us, how did you know about the Synagogue Church of All Nations and what happened when you eventually came here? When I used the hearing aids, I said, what? When you, came, when you heard about the Synagogue Church of All Nations right in your country and you came here, can you tell us what happened when Prophet T.B. Joshua prayed? When I came to the Synagogue Church of All Nations last week, I was placed at the prayer line and the Prophet came and touched me. I remember he slapped my ears. That's all I can remember. Then I found myself on the floor. I, uh, I remember being held up to stand up on my feet. At that point, I could 
I started to hear noise which I could not hear before with the hearing aids. In fact, I came to church and I was looking at the screen to be able to follow the service. But when I stood up, when, the, when I was held up uh, and, and, and brought up on my feet, I started hearing noise. And I got so excited. I was so excited, I was shedding tears of joy because that's when I realized that I was healed. My ears could hear then. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we put the hands together for Jesus? We have just had this was a mighty miracle that took place in her life. She said when she came to the church that Sunday service, she was reading the lips of the prophet as he was uh, ministering to the people and she could not hear at all, even with the hearing aids put in her ears. But after that mighty touch from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, through his anointed one prophet T.B. Joshua, she said she could hear clearly. And ever since uh, last week, Sunday, that you have been healed, tell us how your hearing has been now. How is your hearing now since last week Sunday you have been healed? I, okay, uh, at the point that uh, at the point that I was healed, yeah, I was excited. I was shouting. I was saying, "Amen! I'm healed! I'm healed!" In Jesus. And you can hear Amen. perfectly Amen. now. Amen! I and was healed. So I'm put healed. your hands together once again for Jesus. I said, "Put your hands together louder for Jesus Christ." So we give glory to God Almighty for this miraculous healing that has taken place in your life. Somebody that could not hear at all, but totally transformed through the healing touch of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is a wonderful thing uh, to witness in our own time, in our own generation, uh, through Psalm 97, Prophet T.B. Joshua. And we now know that the age of miracle is not past. The miracle worker is still alive, and his name is Jesus Christ. If you know that, put your hands together once again for Jesus. Téléspectateurs, nous voulons tout juste entendre le merveilleux et extraordinaire témoignage de cette femme. Elle dit que le problème qui l'a emmené à la synagogue liste de toutes les nations fut la perte de l'audition des deux oreilles, utilisant des appareils auditifs. Elle dit qu'elle a souffert pendant dix longues années. Sans les appareils auditifs, elle ne pouvait entendre. Elle dit que ceci affecta sa vie familiale et sa carrière. Elle ne pouvait pas socialiser avec les gens. Ceci qui l'a poussé à l'isolation, car personne ne voulait avoir une conversation avec elle. Quand les personnes devaient répéter leurs phrases, leurs mots une dizaine de fois, elle dit que ceci devenait une nuisance pour eux. Quand elle ne pouvait ni entendre ni comprendre ce qu'il disait, dit qu'à l'âge de 14 ans, elle fut sous traitement pour la tuberculosis qui affecta ses oreilles, causant la perte de l'audition. Elle dit que voilà, elle fut frustrée. Quand même, les appareils auditifs n'étaient pas de grande aide. Elle dit voilà, son lieu de travail, quand il y avait des réunions, elle ne pouvait plus comprendre ni entendre ce que son patron, ce que les autres disaient, ce qui était un embarras pour elle. Et elle a dû voilà arrêter son travail, prendre la retraite à un jeune âge. Elle dit que voilà, elle décida de venir à la synagogue de toutes les nations quand il n'y avait point de solution pour elle. Elle avait réalisé que seule Jésus-Christ avait la solution et que seul Jésus-Christ était le guérisseur. Elle dit que dès que le prophète Tibi Jochanin posa les mains, pria pour elle, elle a commencé à entendre des petits sons, puis elle a commencé à entendre clairement des choses qu'elle ne pouvait pas faire auparavant. Elle dit que voilà, pendant dix longues années, elle n'a pas entendu, mais après deux secondes, dès que le prophète Tibi pour elle a prié pour elle, elle a regagné son audition, elle peut entendre clairement. Les spectateurs rendent gloire à Dieu pour ce témoignage. Escuchamos otro maravilloso testimonio de esta mujer que viene desde Kenia. Ella nos cuenta que tenía un problema de pérdida severa de la audición. Dice que empezó cuando tenía tan solo 14 años y contrajo tuberculosis. Dice, dice que desde ahí sus oídos empezaron a perder la capacidad auditiva. Dice que por mucho tiempo empezó con esta pérdida hasta hace 10 años donde realmente se convirtió en algo crítico y empezó a afectar su vida, su carrera, no podía desempeñarse bien en su trabajo debido a que no podía escuchar bien a las personas y como un oficial de las Naciones Unidas dice que no podía escuchar bien las conferencias, esto la hizo sentirse frustrada y aislarse de las personas ya que no las podía oír bien, también afectó su relación con su familia porque no podía escucharlos bien, ella dice que hace dos años el problema llegó a ser tan severo que le enviaron a utilizar estos audífonos y dice que aún con ellos tenía una gran dificultad desesperada vino aquí a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones y el profeta Tibi Joshua oró por ella y el toque del Espíritu Santo inmediatamente abrió sus oídos y de ese, desde ese momento recuperó su capacidad auditiva hoy puede oír perfectamente y le da toda la gloria y la honra a Jesucristo continuamos
in before. And I want to hear an encouraging word from you. So what advice do you want to give to people all over the world? Listen to your testimony. What do you want to tell them about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Amen. What is your advice? My advice to those who have uh, the same problem as I have, do not give up. Ask God to give you the grace to endure, and he will surely heal you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you for that wonderful advice that's provided in God's word. It's everything we need to live for him here and now. So whoever may be facing one situation or the other, we just continue to trust in the goodness of God Almighty, for he is able to see us through. We give glory to God for what he has done in your life. He has given you a perfect and complete healing from a terrible hearing loss. So now that you have been healed, what do you want to do with this hearing aids that you have seen on this table before you this hearing aids I do not need them in fact since last Sunday I have not used them and I do not miss them I will not miss them again I say bye bye to them Hallelujah. She has just dropped the hearing aids. Uh, to God be the glory. We give God Almighty for this miracle. We have been able to witness how a, a deafness was transformed to a perfect and complete healing. And now she could hear to the glory of God. We, are, we give glory to God Almighty. I want to advise you that now that God Almighty has granted you this healing, remember that it's for the salvation of your soul. Worshiping, continue to um, listen to his word, make his word a standard for your life. And know that better is not good enough, the best is always yet to come. If you know that, put your hands together once again for Jesus. prier pour nos visiteurs internationaux, résident au sein de l'église, venus de différents pays du monde. Ils vont recevoir ce toucher de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ. Répondant à leurs points de besoin, l'esprit a commencé à se manifester, des aspects contraires à la présence de Dieu, à l'esprit de Dieu, c'est en train de se manifester. Recevez aussi, téléspectateurs, là où vous vous trouvez, recevez cette onction, cette puissance de Dieu qui est en train d'ouvrir dans l'esprit. Et soyez guéris, délivrés et bénis aujourd'hui dans le nom puissant de notre Seigneur Jésus Christ. C'est un stick. Un très petit stick. Oui, c'est un normalement pris en long. Oui, c'est un processus. Oui, c'est un Sometimes you see yourself among the dead. Yes, sir. That's the spirit of dead. Yes, sir. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So that was how our brother received his deliverance and also a pinpoint word of prophecy. And we want to... We want to listen to him right now. Brother, you're very welcome in Jesus' name. Please introduce yourself to us and share with us more about your life experience and how you can confirm those words of prophecy to be true. Emmanuel. People of God, my name is Mfanfigile. I am here to confirm and to confess the word of prophecy 
that was uh, given to me by uh, the highly favored man of God, Prophet T.P. Joshua, last Sunday. The man of God gave me two prophecies. The first prophecy, he said that there is a stick that I carry which is possessed, of which I confirm that prophecy to be true. And he also said that uh, I see dead bodies in my dreams uh, and that uh, I have got a spirit of death, of which I also confirm that prophecy to be true. Uh, I, I confirm it to be true. So I, 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 I come from a, a, a family of Sangomas. My grandmother was a Sangoma. My mother was also a Sangoma. So growing up in that setup, uh, we were involved uh, uh, in many things that uh, Sangomas do, including the initiation of other Sangomas. And uh, when there are ceremonies for appeasing the ancestors, we were also taking part in those ceremonies. I also have a number of incisions in my body for protection which was done by our parents. So uh, this thing uh, has really affected me because growing up uh, I was a wayward kid. I was okay, so we're, we're ex understanding the experience of our brother. He said that he's from a home of Sangomas, which uh, we know to be spiritualists or witch doctors. And he said his grandmother was a Sangoma, his mother was a Sangoma. So he was born into this environment and he has incisions, marks all over his body as a result of the rituals that were done to him from a young age. So brother, as you were growing up, tell us how this began to affect your lifestyle. Uh, as I was growing up, uh, I, at the age of 15, I started uh, taking drugs. Uh, I started smoking uh, marijuana. I started smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol. And uh, later on, I started even taking cocaine. So this affected me a lot because whenever I was high on the drugs and drunk with alcohol, where, whenever I come to these places, the social circle is in the bars, people just pack their belongings and run away because they know that here is trouble. I, I was a person with a lot of anger and I was causing trouble. I was fighting people, uh, no matter how many you are, I will fight you. Whether I am getting hurt, I wouldn't really care. And I was not scared even of the cops. I, I, I even uh, fight the cops when they came for me. So it, it, it really affected my life a lot. So under the influence of these drugs, you became very, very violent. Of course, I was a very violent person. Okay. Could you tell us, give us an example of how serious was this drug addiction on a daily basis? How much were you taking uh, during this period? Uh, the addiction was too much because, as I said, I started uh, taking the drugs at age 15. So I was addicted for 25 years because now I'm 40. So uh, I, I, I would take about 10 joints a day, every day. So it was affecting me because whenever I'm high, I, I, I become angry and nobody would like to be next to me. So people of God, we understand the severity of the addiction. Our brother's talking about 10 joints of marijuana every single day, in addition to taking alcohol, cigarettes, and it graduated to the point of taking cocaine as well, these hard drugs. So tell us, from this point forward, brother, how did this uh, addiction now graduate into a worse, uh, a worse situation? As time uh, went by, I then started engaging into uh, farming marijuana uh, with my friends and with some of my brothers and we also smuggled it to other countries uh, where we have secured a market. So but still all these problems which we were trying to solve with the illegal business, they were not because the money I would receive from the sale of the trucks, I will use it recklessly and I wouldn't know what I have done with that money. So 
that is when when the problems escalated even to my family we we, 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 we were fighting always there were problems broken relationships in the family financial problems yet we are working so then we decided that we approach sangoma to cleanse our home from all these things so the sangoma came to our home he did the ritual he cleansed the home and he invited me to his place to further complete the process so when i get to it, when i go to his place then that is when he I, I i i actually told him that i am engaged in this business of uh, uh, smuggling drugs outside the country so he, pro he, he, he then said he has a solution that will help me so that the cops, the police will not catch my, my daha when I'm transporting it and so that when the buyers, when I reach the buyers, they will pay handsomely for our consignment. So that is when he gave me the stick, which he said I must use, I must put in the bag when transporting the marijuana. So it will protect us on the way from the police and also the buyers will pay us handsomely. And really I was shocked when the man of God prophesied about the stick because nobody knew about it, even in my family, except for my younger brother. So it was shocking, honestly. <laughs> That's not loud enough. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. I hope we understand what our brother is saying. He said that he went to a Sangoma at the time. The problems in the family were so much that so he went to this witch doctor who invited him to the shrine. And there when he told the witch doctor that he was engaging in the illicit business of drug trafficking uh, and he was having some challenges, that witch doctor actually gave him a stick and told him that any time the drugs are being taken abroad, he should place that stick within the luggage. And as a result of that, it would have easy passage, it would not be caught by the police, and it would reach its destination. So when he came to the synagogue church of all nations, prophet T.B. Joshua immediately prophesied to him that he sees a stick which is possessed. And our brother is saying that he did not tell anyone about this stick. No one, even in his family, aside from his brother, knew about this stick that was given to him by the Sangoma. And that was how Jesus Christ went straight to this through the prophetic word and spoke about this. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So brother, continue with your explanation. Yeah, so uh, we, 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 we continued with the trade, with smuggling the, 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 the Maria Joanna, but the problems, they never ceased. Instead, they escalated. So then a friend of mine at work, he, 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 she introduced me to Emmanuel TV. So when I was watching Emmanuel TV, I was shocked that uh, uh, there is they, they, someone with uh, uh, such uh, anointing that he can deliver people from the same problems that I was facing and the same problems that we are facing as a family. So that is when I decided that, no, I should come to the Synagogue Church of All Nations for deliverance. And you can be surprised that even before I came here, the day before I was taking the marijuana, and I was thinking about bringing some, yeah, because, <laughs> yes. So that is how I came to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. And when the man of God, during the Sunday service, when he touched me, uh, I don't know what happened, I, I just found myself on the floor and when I rose up, I, I felt a calmness I cannot explain inside me and there was so much peace that I knew that I am delivered and I knew that my family has been delivered and the devil has been shamed. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Now, to the glory of God, we want to quickly replay what happened to our brother last week when he received that touch and that word of prophecy, and thereafter we'll listen to the changes in his life. So let's watch our screen again and see exactly what happened. We here are waiting to receive that same touch from heaven through the prophetic word from Jesus Christ in the life of Prophet T.B. Joshua. Let's watch again right now. L'homme de Dieu est en train de prier pour nos visiteurs internationaux. Réside au sein de l'église, venu de différents pays du monde. Il va en recevoir ce toucher de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ. Répondant à leurs points de besoin, l'esprit a commencé à se manifester, des aspects contraires. 
à la présence de Dieu, à l'Esprit de Dieu, c'est en train de se manifester. Recevez aussi, téléspectateurs, là où vous vous trouvez, recevez cette onction, cette puissance de Dieu qui est en train d'ouvrir dans l'Esprit. Et soyez guéris, délivrés et bénis aujourd'hui dans le nom puissant de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ. Very yes, small stick like this. Yes, sir. You normally take it along. Yes, sir. And it's possessed. Yes, sir. Mm. Sometimes you see yourself among the dead. Yes, sir. That's the spirit of dead. Yes, sir. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ one more time. So, brother, ever since that touch from Jesus last week, tell us the changes you have seen in your life. There is a lot that has changed, actually. Like the man of God prophesied that in my dreams I see dead uh, bodies. Uh, even the day before the Sunday service last week, uh, in my dream I was with a, a dead body, which I was trying to bury on my own. So, but since then, since the deliverance, I have been sleeping peacefully, no bad dreams, and no craving for the drugs. I, I'm I'm just, uh, I feel like I'm just a new creature uh, at all. Well, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So, 25 years of drug addiction disappeared, the urge to take drugs, everything has gone since that touch from Jesus. Ah, it has gone. It has gone. I don't have any craving anymore. Wow. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. And brother, in the light of this encounter, what, what is the decision you want to take now concerning your life? You know, you said before you were engaged in this illicit business. I hope you are now ready to give your life fully to Christ and never return to such activities. I have actually given myself to Christ fully and I have made Jesus the Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. That is indeed the greatest miracle, the salvation of our soul. And brother, we'd like to ask you a word of advice to viewers watching right now, especially those who may have a, a similar problem that you once had and they're watching you right now. What is your advice to them? My word of advice, uh, I, I will take them from uh, the scripture. Uh, one is uh, Matthew 11 verse 28 which says, come to me all ye who are uh, uh, heavenly burdened, I will give you rest. And the second one, I will quote it from the book of Hebrews 4, verse 16, which says, therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, for you will receive mercy and grace in time of need. So my advice to people who are facing the same problem which I was facing is that do as I have done, come to the throne of grace, uh, you will receive mercy and grace whenever you are in need and make God the standard for your life. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. We can see how a former drug addict, drug trafficker is now the one encouraging us with the word of God, quoting the scripture to really confirm the testimony and deliverance in his life. We thank God for your life, brother. We pray that God will give you the grace to continue to make the word of God the standard for your life. And we know the best is yet to come in Jesus' name. Téléspectateurs, nous venons toujours entendre le témoignage de cet homme qui a reçu une parole prophétique du prophète Hibi Joshua disant il y a un bâton, un petit bâton que tu utilises et qui est possédé. Je te vois toujours au milieu des personnes décédées. Il dit que voilà, qu'il vient d'une famille qui était, et même sa grand-mère et sa mère fut des sangomains, c'est-à-dire des guérisseurs traditionnels, où ils adoraient des idoles et il dit qu'il participe à plusieurs euh, rituels dès son jeune âge qui affecta sa vie. Il commença à se droguer à l'âge de 15 ans, il buvait beaucoup de boissons alcoolisées, il fumait de la marijuana, du tabac et il se bagarrait toujours. Il dit qu'il avait même commencé à prendre de la drogue dure comme la de la cocaïne, une addiction de 25 ans qui l'a poussé à être violent, extrêmement violent. Il dit qu'il a même commencé à trafiquer de la drogue à l'étranger, comme de la marijuana, et l'argent qu'il gagnait, il ne pouvait pas se satisfaire, il était toujours en manque d'argent. Il dit que voilà, un sorcier lui offrit un petit bâton afin de le protéger, afin que les policiers ne, ne l'arrêtent pas et ne fouillent point ses valises. Il dit que voilà, à chaque fois qu'il utilisait ce petit bâton, il n'avait pas de problème. Le petit bâton dont le prophète Tibi Joshua avait fait référence, il dit qu'il fut choqué quand le prophète Tibi Joshua lui parla du petit bâton, il dit qu'il euh, a commencé à trafiquer 
trafiquait beaucoup de drogue, il dit qu'à chaque fois qu'il trafiquait sa vie en Pira, et on a mis l'introduit à Emmanuel TV qui l'a encouragé à augmenter sa foi, et c'est là qu'il est venu à la synagogue de toutes les nations, cherchant la face de Dieu, pour mettre fin à sa mauvaise vie, toutes ses mauvaises habitudes. Il dit que dès que le prophète Ibi Joshua prie à Pouri, il dit que voilà, il s'est senti comme une personne nouvelle, il dit que l'obsession de se droguer toutes mauvaises habitudes a disparu. Il dit que maintenant il est un nouveau-né, et que voilà, il n'a plus envie de faire les choses mauvaises dans sa vie, il a donné sa vie à Dieu. Lui qui était autrefois un drogué, trafiquant de drogue, maintenant il encourage tout le monde de chercher la face de Dieu. Et tous ceux qui avaient le même problème que lui demandent, s'il vous plaît, cherchez la face de Dieu, Dieu vous apportera la délivrance. Escuchamos otro poderoso testimonio y en este caso para comprobar ese poder de liberación en la palabra profética dada por el hombre TV Joshua, el hombre de Dios, el profeta TV Joshua. Este hombre dice que estuvo aquí la semana pasada y recibió una profecía donde el hombre de Dios le dijo que había un, eh, una vara que era pequeña y que él tenía en su posesión y que además había un espíritu de muerte en su vida. Él viene a confirmar esta palabra, ser 100% verdadera porque dice que él creció en una familia que adoraba ídolos, él dice que viene de una familia donde habían brujos y que su madre y su abuela eran brujas y que él también al crecer en esta familia lo hacían partícipes de diferentes sacrificios y rituales a estos ídolos, él dice que desde que él empezó a crecer el deseo por las drogas estaba en él y durante 25 años fue adicto a las drogas, a la marihuana y a la cocaína, dice que tal era su adicción que también empezó a llevar a cabo actividades ilícitas traficando droga junto a su familia. Cuenta que una vez estaban tan mal como familia que fueron a buscar solución en otro brujo y este brujo cuando se enteró que ellos estaban llevando a cabo actividades ilícitas le dijo y le dio una vara y le dijo que cada vez que fuera a traficar droga pusiera esa vara en su maleta y eso le iba a ayudar. Él dice que era tanta la desesperación porque su vida empezó a empeorar cada vez más con esta adicción que decidió venir a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones y el hombre de Dios lo localizó con la palabra profética y a través de esa palabra él quedó libre y hoy dice que no tiene deseo por las drogas ya no lleva a cabo actividades ilícitas y él y su familia están libres en el nombre de Jesús continuamos Please introduce yourself and those who are standing with you and then share with us your testimony. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. My name is Edema Roslin. I'm 24 years old and I'm from Nigeria. People beside me is my dad, Mr. Herbert Edema, and my beautiful mom, Mrs. Choma Edema. The testimony that brought me here is academic breakthrough through the constant use of the new morning water and praying along with the senior prophet T.B. Joshua and Emmanuel TV. I gained, I gained admission I gained admission in 2013 in University of Lagos to study cell biology and genetics. So I, as any other student, I wanted to do my best. I wanted to come up with the first class. I wanted to make my parents proud. So I started reading. I would read for eight hours, nine hours. I wouldn't sleep. And I was putting on all these efforts, and my results were not showing for it. In fact, I would just see one miserable D, and I'll be like, I did not read for it. 
So I was wondering, this kept on happening for five semesters, the same result, the more effort I was putting, the same result, I, I, okay, let me go for extra tutorials, the same thing, and I knew that there had to be a hand in this, I have to go to Jesus, I was tired of reading and nothing was showing for it, I knew that I needed God in my life. So there was this particular dream I usually have during my examination. I would see myself in the examination hall, and then all of a sudden, I would see that someone just come and take my script away, or I would just not know what to write. And anytime I have that particular dream, there is no amount of reading that I will read that would make me pass that exam. So it was, it was like a shock. I, I knew that I needed God, so I was opportuned to get to obtain the new anointing, the new, um, new morning water. My dad sent it to me, so I started using it, and there was an immediate change in my academics. It was as if my brain opened. Whatever I was reading, I was comprehending. I, the notes that would take me two months to understand, I was I could understand it in like two weeks. It was so simple, I started explaining to my mates. It was, it was God's work. So that semester, when I first started using the new morning water and praying along with Emmanuel TV, I had, my, my result was amazing. I didn't expect to have all A's, but God did it for me. So I did that the next semester, and the same thing, straight A's. So my GP that was stagnant for five semesters because of the new morning water, I'm praying along with the senior prophet, T.B. Joshua. My results changed, my life changed, and I, it can only be God. So because of the grace, I was able to graduate with the first class from the University of Lagos. So I want to thank God because I know that it is not my own effort, but the grace of God. And I also want to advise anyone that is having any stagnation in whatever area of your life, be it academics, financial, in your marriage, any kind of stagnation, I want you to know that Jesus Christ can set you free. The only, all you need to do is to have faith, pray, if you can... If you can be opportune to get the anointing water, please do. Pray along with Emmanuel TV. Pray along. Do not joke with anything spiritual because God is in this place and God is willing to set you free if you want to give him a chance. So all you need to do is to open your heart and to open your arms and accept this free gift from heaven itself. Thank you. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So now you graduated with a first class in what course and which institution? In, in Cell Biology and Genetics, University of Lagos, Nigeria. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's clap for Jesus one more time. <laughs> and before we hear from your parents, can you show us your, the documents with you? And so with me is my... So with me, it's my certificate I got from University of Lagos. And this is my award, um, Edema Roslin, Cell Biology and Genetics, with a first class honors. Glory be to God. As you can see, that is the award certificate, Bachelor of Science, first class honors in Cell Biology and Genetics. Wow, we give thanks to God Almighty for your life, for this great achievement, and thank God that you realized at a point that you needed God, because without God in our life, there is no meaning. Without God in our life, there is no way we can achieve the true success He has promised us. You have something to add to what you have said? Um, advice to young ones, those who are still struggling uh, with the academics, and they just feel maybe because they are brilliant or they, they, they have a very retentive memory, therefore it is very certain they will come out with first class. With your experience, what do you, what do you want to tell them? My advice to anybody who feels they can do it, you can't do it on your own. You need God. Even to breathe, you need God. And if you feel you're still struggling with your academics, run to God and not away from Him. God that did it for me can do it for you. Don't feel, I was at a point where I felt there was no use. Let me just stop reading and start playing. But God showed, God helped me. He paved the way for me and he can pave a way for you. So do not give up. I don't know what your GP is or what one lecturer told you, but believe 
God. There is God and he would help you. Thank you very much. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus. So show us what you have there on the... Here is my name written in the broker first class, Edema Roslin. My name, Asterix. Okay. So now we can see some pictures on the board as well. We want you to show us those pictures we can see on the board. So these are pictures for my convocation ceremony. This is a picture of me and the VC and some dignitaries in the University of Lagos. I was awarded a certificate. And this is also me on my convocation, me with my mom and me with my lovely parents and my family. Thank you. Glory be to God. So at this point, we would uh, like to hear a word or two from your parents. So, sir, can you just step forward and what do you have to say about what God has done in the life of your daughter? My name is Herbert Edeba, Assistant Control of Customs. It happened that my daughter called me that she has stagnation in her education. And myself, I have love for God. And not only that, I believe in the new morning water as an instrument or as a gift from God. I was opportuned, I came to the church, and I had the new morning water. I took it and went back to her school and gave to her. Hold and behold, children of God, what I saw thereafter was shocking. She was always calling me, ah, daddy, these things has happened. The great keep on, the, the designation was no more because what I now saw was an increased GDP, always going up, going up, going up, and finally she had her first class. Let me put it this way. You see, if you have faith in God, in the instrument of God, definitely it will establish your faith. Not only that, it will develop you, and of God, the faith will build. It was on that she has used. And, and I used to carry my family along, especially my children. I used to carry them along in the things of God. And also want to use the opportunity to maybe recognize women in this hall and this church and women in the whole world all over about the contributions of women in the house. She was so supportive and caring. Well, let me put it this way. In Custom Palace, that what we call Bosa. I want to give people three Bosa. Bosa, Bosa, Bosa. You put it well for in my life. Okay, thank you. So now we believe you are very proud to see your daughter coming out with a first class honors. So how do you feel about that? Oh, I feel great. That's why I give them Busa, the women and the men. But of, of course, I must also add one thing for the youths. Maybe let me add quickly. I'll advise you. You need to be closer to God. Beyond that one, there are three A's I'll give you. A, the first A is atmosphere. Make sure you walk along people that are brilliant. They will help you so too, too much. Two, the second A is you must have an attitude. Remove all negative attitude in your heart because heart is the means of communication between yourself and God. Because let me give it put it this way. You see, in the moment you pollute your heart, it doesn't work that way. The last A is you must put whatever you do into action. You must work hard. And thereafter, the same that happened to my family will happen to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus Christ. hard work with quiet confidence in God. That is the secret. We thank God for everything. So, mom, what do you want to say? I know your daughter has said it all. 
So how do you feel as a mother seeing your daughter with this beautiful performance? I feel great. I thank God that my, my, my husband and daughter have said it so Emmanuel. Thank you. Let's clap for Jesus one more time. And now we would like to encourage our sister for what the Lord has done in your life. This is just a stepping stone to a greater future. Continue to trust in him and make his word the standard for your life. The Bible says his blessings are unlimited. And we believe that you're coming back to share greater testimony after this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, let's clap for Jesus Christ. Acabamos de escuchar el increíble testimonio. Escuchamos el increíble testimonio de esta joven que viene a compartir los milagros de Dios en su vida. Ella nos comenta que recibió, por gracia de Dios, a través de su padre, el nuevo agua de la mañana. Ella estaba teniendo estancamiento en su carrera, en todo lo que es en parte de su vida. Ella tenía un estancamiento muy fuerte. Ella se encontraba estudiando en la universidad y todo lo que tenía que ver con sus estudios, con sus notas, ella no podía estudiar, ella no podía desarrollarse en su carrera. Nos comenta que en sus sueños tenía un espíritu que la atacaba y que también se robaba sus notas en el colegio y nos comenta de que esto la llevaba de estancamiento a estancamiento y ella gracias a la administración del nuevo ago de la mañana en su vida, desde entonces ella ha estado de progreso en progreso ella nos comenta de que ahora puede leer bien puede estudiar, puede recordar las cosas que ella leía y para la gloria de Dios ella ya se graduó con un título de biología y genética allí en la Universidad de Lagos, con unas notas muy altas, con la primera en la clase y con honores, le damos la gloria a Jesucristo por este testimonio, continuamos Téléspectateurs, nous voulons toujours d'entendre le merveilleux témoignage de cette jeune fille. Elle dit qu'elle est une étudiante, que voilà, elle a étudié beaucoup pendant sa vie, mais pendant, à chaque fois qu'elle avait son contrôle final, elle recevait toujours des grades D. Elle dit que voilà, pendant cinq semaines, elle n'a fait que recevoir des grades D. Elle qui s'attendait à avoir un grade A, elle dit que voilà, elle passait son temps à réviser. C'est comme si le plus qu'elle qu révisait, elle apprenait. Elle, toute sa vie prenait un mauvais tour. Elle dit qu'elle était stagnant. C'est là qu'elle a décidé de chercher la face de Dieu. Elle dit qu'elle a commencé à prier avec le prophète Tibi Joshua à travers Emmanuel TV. Et c'est là qu'elle a eu la grâce aussi de recevoir la nouvelle eau du matin. Elle a commencé à appliquer la nouvelle eau du matin. Dès qu'elle a appliqué la nouvelle eau du matin, c'est là qu'elle est partie faire son examen. Elle dit que, que dès qu'elle a eu le résultat, elle fut choquée car elle fut la première de sa classe, elle qui a échoué cinq fois. Maintenant, elle est la première de la classe. Aujourd'hui, elle est une diplômée en sciences, en biologie, en génétique. Et elle dit que elle vous encourage tout le monde, les étudiants, que vous ne pouvez rien faire tout seul. Vous avez besoin de Dieu, même pour respirer, s'il vous plaît, des étudiants. Courez vers Dieu, croyez en Dieu. Vous avez besoin de Dieu pour réussir. À téléspectateurs, vous avez vu comment Dieu a transformé la vie de cette jeune fille. Rendons gloire à Dieu pour ce merveilleux témoignage. Restez connectés pour la suite. Monsieur, dites-nous votre nom, votre pays d'où vous venez et partagez avec nous le témoignage merveilleux de ce que Dieu a fait dans votre vie. Good morning, people of God. Emmanuel. Mon nom est Milingu Lepengue Fabrice. J'ai 42 ans. Je reviens du Gabon. Et la personne à ma gauche, c'est ma merveilleuse épouse. Elle s'appelle Milingu Irene Prisca. 
He says his name is Mr. Milingu Fabrice. He's 40 years old from Gabon, and the lady standing next to him is his wife. Can you tell us your testimony? Share with us your testimony. Partagez votre témoignage avec nous. Ce que Dieu a fait pour vous. Mon témoignage, c'est de rendre grâce à Dieu pour la guérison qu'il a opérée dans ma vie de l'hépatite B et de l'hépatite C. J'ai souffert de cette maladie pendant 12 ans et par la grâce de Dieu, au travers du ministère de l'homme de Dieu, j'ai été guéri de cette maladie. Les symptômes de l'hépatite B, surtout de l'hépatite C, sont vraiment pénibles. Et pendant 12 ans, j'ai traversé des moments très difficiles. L'hépatite C se manifeste par des symptômes comme un enfant qui souffre de la trépanositose. Vous avez les douleurs au niveau des articulations, vous avez du mal à vous lever et également c'est l'hépatite qui est responsable de la cirrhose du foie. Et pendant ces douze années pénibles, j'avais du mal, je pouvais faire deux ou trois jours, j'étais couché et je ne pouvais pas marcher rapidement. Je ne pouvais pas non plus courir, mais aussi cela affectait mon foyer, cela affectait également mon travail. Lorsque vous passez toute la journée couché et que votre femme pense que vous êtes paresseux, cela affecte énormément votre foyer. Et au travail, souvent les collègues me traitaient de menteur, parce que simplement les gens, quand ils me regardaient, ils voyaient que j'étais en forme, mais la nuit, j'avais du mal la journée à pouvoir marcher parce que ces douleurs m'affectaient au niveau des articulations et au niveau des, du dos. Je restais couché toute la journée. He says that he has been suffering for 12 years of pain from hepatitis B and C. He said the symptoms were so severe, it affected his work and even his personal life. He was in constant pain. And when these symptoms start to manifest, it became like sickle cell. Mean all the joint, the body was affected, he was able to, unable to move. So he was bedridden for three days, many often. When the crisis come, he cannot go to work, he cannot move. Even to move was so painful. So this affected his work. Even his colleague at work thought that the man was just playing game. Because say, outwardly he seems fine, but the symptoms were so terrible. He said even the wife thought that he was just wanted to sleep. Because when you see him look strong, but inside of him was excruciating pain. And that affected his whole life. Continue. Et donc, euh, pendant ces 12 ans, c'était vraiment pénible. Euh, quelquefois, Lorsque la douleur se manifeste, je me mets à pleurer seul parce que personne ne comprenait ce qui se passait dans mon corps. Et également sur le plan médical, ce qui nous a étonnés, c'est que logiquement, l'hépatite C, C se transmet par voie sexuelle. Mais lorsque nous allions à l'hôpital faire des examens, les examens révélaient que mon épouse était négative et moi j'étais positive. Et nous avons compris que cette maladie n'était pas d'origine médicale, mais elle était d'origine spirituelle. Alors nous avons commencé à chercher des solutions. He said the symptom was so much, the pain was so much. He went to visit so many hospitals and specialists to find a solution to it. But all the treatment he was receiving couldn't bring any solution. To the extent they affected the wife, he said, what surprises him? That that sickness is very contagious. It's supposed to give the sickness to the wife. But any time they go to the hospital for examination, the wife is negative, while he, is, he was positive. He began to realize that there's something not ordinary in this sickness. He began to realize this is a curse. Mm -hmm. What happened next? Que s'est-il passé ensuite? Ensuite, malgré les traitements que nous suivions, il n'y avait pas de solution. Nous avons commencé à prier au niveau du Gabon, dans les églises, avec des frères, mon épouse et moi à la maison, faire des jeûnes et des prières. Mais plus on priait, plus les symptômes se manifestaient. Et les symptômes allaient en, en empirant. Alors, euh, par la grâce de Dieu, une sœur nous a introduit à Emmanuel TV. Et nous avons eu l'opportunité de visiter la synagogue, où l'homme de Dieu nous a donné la nouvelle eau du matin. 
He says after they exhausted all the medical solutions given to them, they start praying from prayer house to prayer house. But the thing get worse. And a faithful day, one sister introduced them to Emmanuel TV. And he watched Emmanuel TV, saw the miracle of what God was doing through his servant. And they decided to come here for the healing touch of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Et en rentrant chez moi au Gabon, nous avons commencé, mon épouse et moi, à prier avec l'eau du matin. Et j'ai commencé à faire des songes où je voyais l'homme de Dieu venir me dire que ta peine est terminée. Je voyais des songes où il priait pour moi, il m'imposait les mains. Et au fur et à mesure, un matin, je me suis réveillé. Parce que lorsque les symptômes se manifestaient, je passais toute la journée, j'avais du mal à me coucher. Mais un matin, j'ai pu me réveiller très tôt. Et pendant plus d'une semaine, je me réveillais très tôt à 6 heures du matin. Et je me suis rendu compte que les symptômes avaient totalement disparu. C'est alors que mon épouse et moi, nous sommes allés faire des examens. Et effectivement, les examens ont révélé que j'étais négatif. Frère, attendez, quand vous êtes venu, l'homme de Dieu vous a donné la nouvelle au du matin. Dites-nous, qu'est-ce qui s'est passé quand vous êtes arrivé What happened when you saw the man of God What happened Mon rapport médical démontrait que j'avais l'hépatite B et l'hépatite C virale. Et je faisais les symptômes. Mm -hmm. Ensuite, ensuite, lorsque l'homme de Dieu nous a donné l'eau du matin et que nous sommes rentrés au Gabon, on a commencé à prier avec l'eau du matin. Et en priant avec euh, la nouvelle eau du matin, c'est alors que les symptômes ont commencé à disparaître. Plus on, on priait avec l'eau du matin et plus euh, on voyait fréquemment l'homme de Dieu dans les songes que nous faisions. Il said when he was watching a man on TV, he began to see the man of God in the dream. And that propelled him to come down to the Senegal Church of All Nations for, to receive divine solution. When he came, he had the grace to receive the new morning water given to him by the man of God. He said, when he went and applied the new morning water, the symptom of hypothesis B and C disappeared completely in his life. Let's clap for Jesus Christ once again. Clap for him. Let's clap for him louder again. So continue. Sir, we can see this medical report. Can you explain to us the document we see on the board? Alors, ici, nous avons le rapport médical qui montre que j'ai l'hépatite B et l'hépatite C. Ici, c'est positif. Ici, c'est positif. Hépatite B positif. Hépatite C positif. Et attesté par le médecin du centre hospitalier régional de Port Gentil. Parce que je réside à Port Gentil au Gabon. Et donc ici nous avons euh, le médecin qui atteste que euh, en 2013, c'est le rapport médical 2013-2014, qui atteste que euh, l'hépatite B est positive et l'hépatite C est positive. Merci, thank you. He's showing the medical report that shows that the diagnosis of hepatitis, it was positive hepatitis B and C, and the laboratory test confirmed that he was healed, sick of hepatitis B and C, as you can see on the medical report. Can you show us the one down? Le Et après, après l'application de l'eau du matin, mm -hmm. la nouvelle eau du matin, le rapport médical démontre, lorsque nous sommes allés chez le médecin, après la disparition totale des symptômes, que l'hépatite... B est négatif, l'hépatite C est négatif, et voici les résultats du laboratoire qui les attestent. Let's clap for Jesus Christ once again. Let's clap for him. Let's clap for him once again. Say neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Solution has come. The way out for me has come. Welcome to the arena of liberty. Today, your miracle we just a moment away. Today, your trouble will not escape the anointing of God. Yeah. Give thanks to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Sir, with what God has done for you, what is your advice to those who are having the same trouble today? Avec ce que Dieu a fait pour vous, quel est le conseil que vous donnez à ceux qui souffrent de ce même problème aujourd'hui dans le monde entier? Vous savez, lorsqu'on déclare que vous avez l'hépatite C, surtout C virale, c'est l'hépatite qui est responsable de la cirrhose. Et réellement, je faisais la maladie, je faisais la cirrhose. J'avais du mal à courir, je n'avais plus d'espérance. Mais quelque chose de dedans de moi me disait que Dieu était capable de le faire. 
Et de plus, par la grâce de Dieu, j'ai eu l'opportunité de voir les œuvres de l'homme de Dieu au travers d'Emmanuel TV. Et cela a augmenté davantage ma foi lorsque j'ai vu les miracles s'opérer. Quel est le conseil que vous donnez aux autres qui vous regardent Le conseil Le conseil que je donne aux autres, c'est de persévérer. C'est que Dieu est vivant et il n'y a rien qui lui soit impossible. Rien n'est impossible à Dieu. Thank you, Jesus. He said the counsel to give is to persevere. Don't give up. The answer is coming and Jesus is the answer. Let's clap for him once again. Let's clap for him. Let's clap for him. Let's clap for him. Thank you. Vamos a escuchar el increíble testimonio de sanidad de este hombre que visita la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones para testificar las bondades de Jesucristo en su vida. Él nos comenta de que sufría por 12 años de hepatitis B y C en su vida. Nos comenta que esto les trajo mucha dificultad a su vida y que no podía realizar sus actividades diarias y todos los hospitales y todas las clínicas que él visitaba donde podían dar una solución a su problema. Todos los tratamientos no le pudo traer un alivio a esa enfermedad que tenía en su vida por 12 años. Hasta el momento que visitó la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones, tuvo la oportunidad y la gracia de obtener el nuevo agua de la mañana, él se ministró el agua de la mañana y desde entonces nos comenta de que ya los estudios clínicos muestran que la hepatitis B y C es negativa en su vida le da la gloria a Jesucristo porque la sanidad la liberación y la salvación llegó a su vida luego de la administración del nuevo agua de la mañana, continuamos in church. Emmanuel. 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 My name is Mrs. Kelechi Anumba. I'm Nigerian living in UAE. This is my mother, my sister, and my sister-in-law, and my baby, Immaculate Makwachuku. The problem that brought me to Synagogue Church of All Nations is problem of barrenness, miscarriages, and spiritual husband. This spiritual husband has been disturbing me any time I conceive. The man who came to me in the dream, make love with me. After it, two weeks, I'll have miscarriage. It happened happens about five times since 2015. Then one day, I was searching on YouTube and I saw Emmanuel TV. I said, I click it because I'm searching to see film to watch. Then I click it, I started watching. Seeing testimony, miracle, deliverance. I said, no, I have to go to Emmanuel uh, synagogue Church of All Nations, T.B. Joshua. I told my husband because 
All this why he has been taking me to many hospitals everywhere, but no solution. Then, since I've been watching the Man Health TV, praying with no prevent TV Joshua in the screen, praying with the Man Health TV partners, then one day, man of God came to me in the dream. Sino prophet TB Joshua, he came to me and he prayed to me. I said, any moment from now, your system will change. I said, amen. I wake up. I said, God, he has done it. I told my husband, I'm going to Nigeria. He said, to what? I said, I'm going to Nigeria, to synagogue church of all nation. He said, okay. I should prepare, I now prepare. I came down here last year. During the mass prayer, man of God was praying to every people, people all over the world. Any condition, any problem out in your life, in your family, anywhere it is. So I now claim the anointing. I said, this situation of barrenness, miscarriage, Spiritual husband, out in my life, out in my family, out in my body, out in my stomach. I claim that prayer and I'll go back to UAE. I met with my husband as husband and wife. I conceive again. After that month, I said, ah, my body started changing. I went to hospital. Ah, I'm pregnant again. So... <laughs> I now say, okay, after three months, I now go back to hospital to scan. I'm pregnant of three months and my husband said, wow, because before, two months to three months, I'll have miscarriage. But this one, no miscarriage again, no spiritual husband, no barrenness again. Let us put our hands together. Put your hands together. She said when she saw the man of God in the dream, the man of God said to her, any moment from now, your system will change. Claim that to your life. Say, any moment from now, my situation will change. My situation is going to turn around. Put your hands together for Jesus if you claim that. Tell us, after that pregnancy, what happened? After that pregnancy, no miscarriage again, no spiritual husband again, no barrenness. Now, this is my baby, a Marklet, Mark Oshuku. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Tell us, what is your condition now? Ever since then, we thank God you are holding this bouncing baby girl in your hand. Have you been seeing the spiritual husband? What is your relationship now with your husband in the United Arab Emirates? Yeah, now I'm happy because marriage without a baby is nothing. You can eat, you can wear clothes, but without a cry of a baby, nothing. You can't have no happiness in that marriage because before I be crying morning and night so but now I can hear a cry of my baby thank you we thank God for what the Lord has done in your life right now and there on the screen of our television, you can see after the woman has received the appointment from God, when the man of God told her that any moment from now, your condition will change. Her condition changed. She got pregnant. She went to the hospital. You can see on the screen of your television, the scan results that says everything is normal. The baby is in normal position and she deliver just like that. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. And now tell us, 
What is the word of advice you have for women that are in your condition that you were once be in before? Tell us, what do you have to tell them all over the world? The advice I have for the women like me, like my situation before, pray to God, come to him, have faith. The God who did it for me will surely do it for you in Jesus' name. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Watch your screen. And this is the picture where she was heavily pregnant. Can you see the glory of God? That is the pregnancy with a difference. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. Yes, madam, we want to advise you that the Lord has blessed you with this wonderful gift. Make sure you train up this child in the way of the Lord so that when she grows up, she will never depart from it. And we pray that God Almighty is going to give you the grace, the strength to train her in Jesus' name. Amen. Escuchamos un maravilloso testimonio de sanidad. Esta mujer nos cuenta que estuvo enfrentando el problema de múltiples abortos, que cada vez que quedaba embarazada ella perdía a su hijo y perdiendo así la esperanza junto a su esposo. Ella nos cuenta que uh, después de haber intentado, yendo a muchos doctores, haciendo muchas terapias, ella visitó la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones, donde se unió en oración, en fe con el profeta Tibi Joshua durante la oración más en la que el hombre de Dios estaba reprendiendo todo espíritu de aborto y todo esposo espiritual. Esta mujer se unió a esta oración en fe y nos cuenta que cuando regresó nuevamente a su hogar y se encontró como esposa y esposo con su, su marido, esta mujer pudo quedar embarazada. Vimos también la fotografía de cuando ella estaba en embarazo y ahora vemos este fruto del vientre hecho realidad. Vemos esta pequeña que está aquí saludable y ella comparte su testimonio y le da gracias a Dios porque esta mujer estaba enfrentando muchos eh, ataques espirituales en sus sueños, ella tenía pesadillas todas las noches y cada vez que quedaba embarazada ella tenía un encuentro con un esposo espiritual que rompía la bendición del fruto del vientre, pero después de esa maravillosa oración, ella está aquí hoy con, eh, compartiendo su maravilloso testimonio para la gloria de Dios y aconseja a las mujeres que también están buscando por el fruto del vientre que confíen en Dios, que tengan Tengan fe, porque el tiempo de Dios es el mejor. Continuamos. Nous avons entendu le témoignage de cette femme qui a souffert de l'infertilité pendant de longues années, de nombreuses années dans la souffrance. Elle dit que elle avait le, pour la source, c'était un mari spirituel qui l'attaquait dans les rêves. Elle disait un mari de nuit qui l'empêchait d'avoir cet enfant, qui l'attaquait par des bénédictions. Elle est allée d'hôpital en hôpital pour chercher une solution à ce problème d'infertilité, mais sans aucune solution médicale. Elle a prié un jour et l'homme de Dieu lui a parlé dans les rêves. Elle lui a dit que son problème était terminé. Alors, avec cette foi du cœur, elle est venue ici pour la prière. Et durant la prière de masse, quand l'homme de Dieu a prié que toutes les puissances de ténèbres qui perturbaient la vie des personnes soient liées, elle a été complètement délivrée et libérée de ce mari de nuit au nom de Jésus. Et lorsqu'elle est rentrée chez elle, elle a rencontré son mari, elle est tombée enceinte. Et cette fois-ci, contrairement aux autres fois où elle avait des, des, des fausses couches tout le temps, elle n'a pas eu aucune fausse couche, la grossesse s'est bien passée, elle a accouché d'une petite fille, c'est ce bébé qu'elle présente aujourd'hui que Dieu a fait les miracles. Lorsque Jésus-Christ dit oui, personne ne dira non. Le conseil qu'il donne à toutes les femmes qui souffrent de ce problème d'infertilité, c'est de porter les regards sur Jésus, ayez foi en lui, la solution arrive.
a gentleman, you left home, you abandoned your home for your wife, something happened between you and your wife, and it's a serious issue. You are here today, please. I'm looking at you. You left home for your dear life. Please come on, come on, come on, come on. God loves you. I'm a pastor. I left home because of uh, my wife. You prophesied about it. She has been scattering my church and uh, asked all the members to leave. While I'm here now, my daughter has sent me a test that she has been fighting against the, the, the members. Well, if that's your church, a church of God, which I'm going to meet you with discuss, is fighting God. It's not you. So don't fight for God. God can fight on his own. But I'm going to meet you to know the foundation of the whole things. Okay? That is why we call you out. Okay? You just wait. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My name is Pastor Hollins Alezo, the senior pastor of New Wine Assemblies, Magodo, Lagos. Um, I hear from Delta State. The next, the next person by my side is my wife, Helen Alezo. Then beside her is uh, my, my daughter, Hanesta Alezo. Then the twins, the first one is uh, Winard Alezo. And the other one is Williams Alezo. They are twins. Can you start your story with the very prophecy you received last Sunday? How you can confirm this to be true and your life experience? Yes, I was here last Sunday. The church was almost uh, coming to an end when uh, our senior prophet, Prophet TB Joshua, prophesied that there's a gentleman who, le who is here who left the home because of the wife and he's here, and so I, I came out. The prophecy is true. Um, I married my wife barely 21 years ago. She was so quiet when I married her, and that is one area that uh, the reason why I married her, because of that quietness. The moment we got married, after about three years, I began to find misunderstanding that we are not together. If I say A, my wife will say B, C. And so it has been for a long haul until we started bearing children. I kept it within myself. What I'm saying now, none of my people are aware of it. She has no respect for me. The worst of it is that I can't sleep with my wife. If we are lying down on the bed, we, lie, we have our bed. We're in the same room. If I lie down with my wife, but I'm sure my leg touched her, and the night she will hit me. Our bedroom, I decided not to put, I decided not to put a door on our bedroom. We have our separate bedroom from our children's own. If my wife wants to bath, maybe I'm inside the room, she will cover. When she comes out, she wants to put her, her on this, she will cover so that I don't see her nakedness. It has been a problem, I told her several times, that I wasn't looking for a, a woman that would cook food for me. There are a lot of restaurants. I wasn't looking for a woman that would go and wash cloth for me. There are a lot of laundries. I needed a woman who would be my companion in life. 
who we, that we can agree to work together. That if we, our ministry will go forward, that we start from our bedroom. My wife does not like to respect me. She doesn't respect me. And so my children are aware of this. Uh, when they grew up, I started sitting them down, table the matter. Five of us will sit down at the parlor to, de to deliberate about it because I don't want to expose my family to outside, outsiders. So if I am in the dream, a man will appear to us, between two of us, and will be talking to me that um, I married her wife. And this man will be fighting me, will be fighting me. Sometimes I will wake up, I will sit down on the bed, I will be looking at my wife. I will be thinking, does it mean she's going outside? But I knew my wife does not go outside. Who is this man? So he has been fighting and fighting and fighting until this time around, I said, I have to move forward in life. I went to the mountain. I stayed one week with some pastors. I took them to the mountain to go and pray concerning my ministry and my life. Because some of the, the way I'm supposed to be is not where I am. I wasn't happy. So we prayed like wounded lion on the mountain. We came back, it was on Friday last week, and we, we have our VG. We did VG together. I was at peace with my wife, no more problem. She prayed, there was no problem. Then we closed from the vigil. We lie down. I lie down. She called me and said I should help her to test one of her old members to bring her back the gas cylinder that she gave to the girl. I said, please let me realize that when it is daybreak, then I can call, I can call her. So she's, the daybreak and the, she frowned her face. I called her. I said, is it that because I didn't test? The young lady, that is why you frown your face, you cannot greet me, you're angry. My daughter was lying by our side because we have some visitors. And so I said, you have to learn how to use your phone to test messages. It's not everything you tell me or my, my children to come and test for you. It's not every message that you, somebody will see. She flew up. She became angry and started talking. I thought it was just a, a normal thing. The worst of it is that when you tell my wife it's okay, then the fire will come more. When, and when anger comes on her, she can put down this house. She started talking, started talking, started talking. He called some people, I don't know the people he was calling. He told them that I want to use her for money rituals. My sister called me from Agbo and said, what is the problem between you and your wife? I never disclosed anything to anybody that your wife, this is what your wife told me now, that you want to use her. I said, my, I see my wife that told you this thing. When I heard about it, I said, this is not an ordinary thing. That is a, a deliverance case, that I must run away from this house. So I carried my baggages and I picked race. I came here and I lodged in a hotel. On Sunday, we were in the service here. The service was almost, at the, it was at the end of the service. My daughter called me. He said to me, Daddy, Kos is a man that introduced my mommy to you. I started shedding tears. It's not everything I'm going to say here. I've gone through so many things that nobody knew except my children. We tried to cover it. What would the word say? Okay, when you finally call, came here last Sunday, tell us what happened. So when I came here, I was crying at that side crying, seriously crying, telling God to locate me. So the man of God was almost rounding up the prayer. He said, yes, there is a man that is here, a gentleman that is here. You run away for your dear life because of your wife. And I came out. The prophecy is correct. Okay, now... Now you've narrated your full story. What exactly do you want? I want deliverance for the whole family, including myself. I want deliverance for the whole family. To God be the glory, he heard it from the pastor. He has fully narrated his life experiences, even his, his marriage. I also confirm that the message of prophecy from the man of God, Senior Prophet TV Joshua, is nothing but the truth. And it's explained how it all happened. So after service last Sunday, 
the church took it upon themselves, upon the instruction of the man of God to invite the wife. And here is the woman in our midst. So I want to hear from her, her own side of the story. Emmanuel. My name is Isioma Alizo. The children standing beside me is my children. The man standing beside me is my husband. It's over 21 years we have been married. But when I married him initially, we, he was not living large, he was not living big. Things was moving on, there was no quarrel. But later I started experiencing something. When these children started growing up, they don't like working, they don't like doing anything at home. And they want to do all the work in the house. So a time I called him, I said, I cannot be doing all these things. Let these children learn how to do work. He told me I should not train these children the way my parents trained me. So I kept quiet. So this very good time, we started living. Till a time he will wake me up, he will tell me that there's a man lying between us. I told him, I said, this man you say you are seeing, I don't see him. Each time he keep on disturbing me, he said there's a man he's seen that is lying between us. I said, I don't see this man. He says all sorts of words to me, painful words. So later I started praying. I said, God, if really this man that this, my husband is saying that he's seen, I'm not seeing him. I have problems, I have issues, I'm suffering. I want to see this man so that I can tell him my challenges. So that he will know my problem. So he keep on calling me name. At times he will say I'm a wizard. At times he will say I'm a marine. I say I want to see this spiritual man you say you are seeing. You are the only one seeing this man. I can't see this man. I want to see this man so that I will tell him the problem I'm facing. So that he will be able to help me out. So that aside. It, it got to a time. These children, he started talking to me anyhow. He was talking to me anyhow, and now we have visitors in our house. When he wants to talk to me, he will talk to me anyhow. After the vigil, like as he said, that he just came back from mountain, because I am having fibroid. I've been bleeding since April. to date now, as I'm telling you. So I'm always weak. I'm in the room. So when he called us for the VG, I say, can I go? You know, I can't stand for long. He said, I should go. So I, after the VG, there is a sister I gave my gas, and somebody else wants to use the gas. I told him, I said, help me test the, help me send text message to the sister, because I don't have her number in my phone. He kept quiet. So later, I went to the kitchen. When I came out, I saw my daughter lying down in our bedroom with him. They were discussing. So I called her. I said, Hanesta, please help me get Susan's sister's number from your daddy's phone and put in my own phone. Immediately he heard me say it. He flew up. He said, eh, why is it I cannot do something for myself? Every time I'm calling the children to come and do something. I said, you know your phone is so technical that I might just screw one thing and the numbers will delete. That's why he, he now said, I, I have something in my mind that my face has changed. And I told him, I said, how did God put my life into your hand that you are the one that created me? You now know everything about me. So that was how the quarrel started. He now left the home. I don't know where he went to. So when it was on Monday, I received a call from an evangelist from Synagogue Church of All Nations that they want to see me here. That is how I came down here. So when I got married to him, I always he's accusing me that he's seen a man. He's seen a man. He's, he keep on calling monsters of names. I told him, I said, but you're my mother-in-law, that is your mother told me because she was looking for a male child. She does not have a male child. She has five girls. She has to go to 21 witch doctors to ask for a male child. I said, instead of you looking, looking for who will deliver you, you need a higher anointing that will deliver you. But you keep on pointing your finger at me. Am I your problem? Praise the Lord. Well, we've heard her own side of the story, and uh, we also want to hear from you, Madam. We thank you so much for honoring the invitation, and uh, we want to hear from you. Now you are here with your husband and your children. What do you want from God? All of us need deliverance. We need total deliverance. Okay, let's finally hear from one of your children.
Okay, sister, tell us your name. Introduce those next to you and your own side of the story. Good morning, church. My name is Alizo Hanesta. The woman next to me is my mother. And the guys next to me are my brothers. And by my right is my father. I thank God for using the prophet, the senior prophet T.B. Joshua last week Sunday to unveil the problem that has been long in our family. My dad has been accusing my mom of being a witch and my mom also accusing him of being a wizard. This problem has been on for long. It has affected us, the children, because anytime there is a quarrel and we are trying to tell whoever is wrong that you are wrong, it looks as if we are taking sides. And at times it might lead to like enmity. The person you are telling you are wrong might not talk to you for some times in the house or some things like that. So, but God has used the problem. My daddy, that was, he went to the camp and when he came back on a Friday, we had vigil that same Friday. So after the vigil, my mom requested for a lady's number. I wasn't there, but the next morning after the vigil, I came into the room, and immediately I came into the room, not quite long, she came into the room also, and she asked me to help her send the number. So she said, Anesta, help me send the number since your dad has refused to give the number to me. And when she said this, her containers wasn't looking good at all. So my daddy now said to her, why don't you learn how to use your phone yourself? So she got angry and there was trouble, making trouble. And there's this thing we normally say. We always tell my mom that she's very, very good in history. Like she can tell history a lot. No matter, she can bring it far, far, far. She's just going to bring it up. And she started bringing stories that I some of the stories that were never even born when those things happened. She started telling those stories. And so like the talk became too much because she was talking, but my daddy did not say any word to her. I was, I'm very sure of that. So what he had to do, because my daddy just had to pack up his bags, then he left the house. No one knew where my daddy went to. And I kept on asking him, where he was going to while he was packing up. He didn't say a word to me. Even after he left, I kept on calling him. He refused to pick my calls. So I, I didn't know where he went to. But severally, my younger brother had dreamt of the man of God, the senior prophet T.B. Joshua, prevailing over our case. So we've always hoped for that day. And I thank God that that very day, the man of God was able to locate my daddy. And anytime we provoke our mom, she will rain curses on us. She will just kneel down and start crying. And she will start raining curses on us. And we will always tell her that, Mommy, why are you raining curses on us? It's not good now. And my daddy tells us that we should make sure we don't provoke our mom. Because when she, raining curses on us as our mom, that is a bad thing to our life. So we always try to escape from that part. That's why at times we are not always close to her. So that to avoid that raining curses on us. Okay, thank you very much. You heard it all from her own side. And you made the point clear that the prophecy that your dad received had been on and on in the dream. And you keep asking yourself, when would this happen so that there could be reconciliation between your mom and your dad? And we thank God Almighty that the day has come. And we thank God Almighty for using Prophet T.B. Joshua to reveal this problem. And the same God that used Prophet T.B. Joshua to reveal this problem, we believe that will bring instant solution. Now, on your own side, what do you want God to do for the family? I know that God that has used the senior prophet T.B. Joshua to intervene in our case, he's going to do a perfect work. And I know he has started it, and I know he will complete it perfectly. And I want the man of God, since he has started this, I want him to please deliver us all, if there's anybody that needs to be delivered. And I want our family to come back as one and be in peace. Amen. To God be the glory, we heard it all, and the Bible says that the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ challenges and changes everything. To his power, nothing is impossible. 
We've heard both sides of the story, and we've heard it all. They want God's intervention. And we believe by the time the man of God, Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua, comes into our midst, God will use him to bring total solution to the crisis in this family in Jesus' name. Let's clap for wonderful Jesus Christ. Escuchamos esta maravillosa confirmación de profecía. Vimos que el domingo pasado durante el servicio dominical el hombre de Dios lanzó una palabra profética de que un caballero había abandonado a su esposa y había salido corriendo de su casa por, por preservar su vida. Este hombre viene acá y nos confirma que la profecía es completamente cierta y él nos cuenta que lleva eh, una relación de 25 años de casado con su esposa quien está a su lado junto a sus hijos. Hijos. Él nos cuenta que esos 25 años han estado llenos de dificultades, de desacuerdos, de frustraciones, que él estaba buscando una compañera y esta mujer, eh, cada vez que él se le acercaba, ella le fastidiaba, le decía que por favor no estuviera a su lado. Tenían constantes pleitos, discusiones que estaban afectando a, su, a sus hijos, no había paz en el hogar y este hombre nos cuenta que constantemente era atacado en sus sueños, en los que veía un hombre que se acercaba con una mujer diciéndole que él debía casarse con la esposa de ese hombre que le aparecía en sus sueños él nos cuenta que esa situación llegó a un punto muy desesperante en la que él tuvo que salir y huir de su casa porque ya lo, las calumnias de su esposa eran muy altas, muy graves, incluso ella llegó a decir que su esposo quería utilizarla para un ritual en la mañana y eso estaba afectando emocionalmente a sus hijos y a su vida personal también, él nos dice que cuando se presentó a las Coan, llega, llegó, eh, recibieron una llamada por parte de su esposa para que eh, pudieran eh, entrar aquí a las Coan para que haya una reconciliación y vamos a esperar la palabra de profecía. Vous avez entendu l'histoire de cette famille qui a des problèmes depuis très longtemps, des problèmes de mésentente dans le, dans le couple et l'homme s'est séparé de sa femme. C'est ainsi que l'homme est venu ici à la synagogue la semaine dernière, l'homme de Dieu a donné une parole de prophétie, il voit un homme qui a abandonné son foyer conjugal. Et ils ont exprimé tous les deux la mésentente des problèmes qu'ils avaient. L'homme a dit qu'il voyait dans le rêve un homme s'interposer entre lui et sa femme, une sorte de mari de nuit. Et ça a déclenché des querelles et des accusations réciproques. Maintenant, ils sont venus chercher la face de Dieu et la délivrance qui vient de Dieu. Et ils prient toujours que l'homme de Dieu puisse délivrer cette famille et les restaurer. Soy el pastor Antonio de la provincia de Misiones en la República Argentina. He said that his name is Pastor Rogel and he comes from the Republic of Argentina. Can you tell us what was the problem you were having before? ¿Cuál fue el problema que tenías antes? Bueno, mi problema fue por el cual vine a la escuela eh, una maldición familiar en el cual esa maldición ha matado a más de 10 eh, familia, integrante de la familia, en la cual estuvo mi abuela eh, y bueno, la última persona fue mi mamá, en el cual cuando ella eh, esta maldición la mató, empecé a sentir en mi cuerpo que eh, fue la hipertensión que empezó a afectar a mi cuerpo y a partir de ahí mi vida fue, fue cambiando, vivía una vida eh, muy, muy mala obviamente. Eh, vivía con, con conflictos dentro de mí porque mi salud estaba cada vez más empeorando tenía que tomar pastilla predicaba en esas condiciones subía al altar cuando partió mi mamá sentí que algo pasó en mi cuerpo y bueno, eh, creo que fue ese, ese espíritu de muerte y a partir de ahí comenzó a afectarme eh, el, la hipertensión 
So he said the problem he had before was a terrible generational curse of hypertension which killed more than 10 people in his family. The problem was so severe that his grandmother died, his mother died, and also many of his brothers and sisters um, and also his relations died because of the same family curse of hypertension. It was a problem that affected him physically. He had to take uh, uh, tablets uh, every single day. And he said that the moment his mother died, that is when he felt the spirit of death enter his body. Me afectó en la salud, en el ministerio, en todas las áreas de mi vida. Sentía en todo tiempo que eh, estaba a punto de morir, en todo tiempo. Pensaba en, en mis pensamientos que en cualquier momento iba a partir, en las condiciones que partieron mi abuela, mi madre y bueno, los demás familiares. Sentía la muerte muy de cerca, inclusive por la noche sentía la sensación de que de que me moría, sentía la sensación de que venían espíritus a atormentarme justamente con la muerte y eh, a causa de eso yo como soy pastor misionero no me había casado nunca pensando, teniendo en cuenta de que no podía llevar a una persona al sufrimiento entonces que en cualquier momento iba a acontecer conmigo lo que pasó con obviamente con mi mamá, lo más cercano que tenía so this spirit of death, um, through this problem of hypertension, destroyed his life. He said that even as a pastor preaching, he, he was always plagued by spirit of death, by thoughts that he was going to die any moment. He said that his, his, his life was, was a total mess. He was not able to, to marry, as he did not want anyone to join him in this life of suffering. So even at his age, he was unable to have a relationship, unable to marry, and he was unable to live a normal life, because he was constantly thinking about dying. Comencé a mirar Emanuel TV y antes y tuve un sueño que el profeta oraba por mí. Cuando comencé a mirar, empecé a despertarme, a mirar Emanuel TV, constantemente miraba. Cuando el hombre de Dios oraba, estaba orando, yo empecé a sentir en mi cuerpo una sensación eh, muy fuerte, cosas que nunca lo había sentido. En ese momento pude expulsar de mi estómago, vomité. Y, y como que mi mente se abrió, pude, pude empezar a sentirme diferente. Pude, tiré, tiré, vomité, tiré como flema, como espuma, algo que no entiendo lo que era, pero sí lo hice. Recuerdo que no estaba bien, estaba en la cama y miraba Emanuel TV. Y en ese momento viene la sensación, después de sentir en mi cuerpo un temblor, una sensación, y expulso eso. Ahí es como que mi mente se empezó a despejar. Ahí siento en mi corazón venir a la escuela, cosa que era imposible, totalmente para el lugar que vivimos, es imposible llegar, era imposible hasta ese momento llegar hasta la escuela. So he said during this time he actually found Emmanuel TV on YouTube and he started to watch Prophet TV Joshua on Emmanuel TV and this brought hope into his life and one day as he was praying along with Emmanuel TV he touched the screen and something inside his body started to shake and he actually vomited out uh, many substances within him and after that he began to see clearly and think clearly and he realized that the only place he could get his deliverance was in the synagogue church of all nations but for him as, as a, as a uh, humble pastor in Argentina. It seemed impossible for him to travel all the way to Lagos, Nigeria, to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Cuando, cuando comencé a, a sentir en mi corazón venir hasta aquí, eh, empecé a buscar la manera, comencé a vender pollo. Vendía los fines de semana pollo, empecé a vender, y de esa manera. Eh, pude vender de una forma sobrenatural, vendía la gente, compraba, paraba, compraba. Eh, eh, yo no entendía, el dinero se multiplicó y así que con eso fui pagando el, el pasaje cuando la escuela me contestó. Hace un año y dos meses atrás aconteció esto. So he said his economic situation was so bad that even as a pastor on Sundays during the week he would be selling chicken because he had nothing to do, he was trying to raise money and eventually God made a way for him and he actually came here to the Synagogue Church for Nations last year. So can you tell us when you were here what happened when Prophet T.B. Joshua prayed for you? ¿Qué sucedió cuando viniste el año pasado y el Profeta T.B. Joshua oró por ti? Cuando el Profeta oró por mí, el Profeta me tocó 
no tuve una sensación, pero tenía la certeza de que yo estaba sano. Inclusive cuando me fui, yo no sentí nada, yo quería caerme, quería manifestar, quería sentir algo. No sentí, el profeta me tocó. Cuando yo vuelvo, en el transcurso de 10 días, para la gloria de Dios, estuve completamente sano y no me di cuenta. Cuando me di cuenta digo, pero no tomo más pastillas, estoy bien, mi cabeza está bien, la presión arterial está bien y me controlaba. Y para la gloria de Dios mi vida cambió a partir de ahí. Soy otra persona, las personas que me conocen, las que me rodean. Pude casarme, el año pasado me casé, tengo una esposa, soy feliz, estamos bien. So he said that when he came to the synagogue church for nations, um, he was sitting on the altar where Prophet Ibi Joshua touched him, and we saw on the screen the very moment where he received that touch in the name of Jesus Christ. And he said at that moment, although he felt nothing physically, he knew that God had broken that curse in his life. So he said that when he returned back to his country of Argentina, he was even expecting something to happen for him to fall over or something to happen when the Prophet touched him. But it was just that touch. And when he went back to his country in just 10 days his whole life transformed he said that um, let's put our hands together for Jesus He said that not only was he physically healed from the problem of hypertension, but he began to think clearly, see clearly. He was even able to get married, something he has never done. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Bueno, a partir de ahí comenzamos con mi esposa, tenemos proyectos, sueños, de seguir adelante, hubo cambios tremendos en mi vida. Eh, no tan solo en mi vida, sino en mi entorno, en mi familia, en la congregación, muchísimos cambios. Fui, fui construyendo dos iglesias más, se plantaron a partir de ahí, el ministerio cambió completamente y tengo ganas de seguir sirviendo a Dios con todo mi ser. A partir de ahí, de ir al monte de oración del profeta, hubo una inspiración de mí. Hace un año comencé un monte cerca del río, alejado de la ciudad tenemos el monte de oración donde hace un año todos los miércoles a partir de la 20 estamos orando en ese lugar y Dios hizo tremendos milagros simplemente orando en ese lugar soy libre totalmente sano de la hipertensión No tengo 12, 7 es normal todo el tiempo como sal, como de todo y no me afecta y antes eran 19, 20 eh, la, 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 se unía con la otra y me sentía morir todo el tiempo He said he wants to give so many thanks to Jesus Christ for the amazing miracle in his life. He said that physically he was healed from the problem of hypertension before, where it's normal to have uh, blood pressure of between uh, 7 to 12. His pressure was high up to 18, 19 or 20, which was very dangerous. But now, after the prayer of Prophet T.B. Joshua, his blood pressure is totally normal. He's not taking any medication anymore. He said not only that, but he was also able to build his church. So now he has his own church. And also during his visit here was inspired as well to start his own prayer mountain so now he has his own prayer mountain he has his own church his congregation his wife and he said everyone sees him as a totally new person in Jesus name let's put our hands together for the miracle worker After all that Jesus has done for you, what is your advice for viewers watching you all over the world? Y con lo que Jesús ha hecho en tu vida, ¿cuál es tu consejo para los espectadores? Mi consejo es para todo el mundo que estés mirando en este momento, de que no pierda la esperanza, que Dios está al control, que Él está mirando nuestra aflicción, de que no hay nada imposible, absolutamente nada, que no hay barrera, que a través de la distancia, así como yo recibí, comencé a recibir mi milagro, la liberación, la sanidad, fue el primer momento que empecé a recibir, fue a través de la pantalla, a través de Emanuel TV. Le aliento, sé que hay pastores que me preguntan, estoy en las mismas condiciones, le aliento a cada persona, no se ha terminado ahí, Dios no se ha olvidado. La fe está activa cuando nosotros comenzamos a unirnos con el, 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 con el hombre de Dios a orar con él. 
But he wants to advise viewers all over the world that truly, by faith, distance is not a barrier for the power of Jesus. He said that even when he was in Argentina, that deliverance and, and healing started in his life when he was watching Emmanuel TV and he prayed along with Prophet TB Joshua and he began to vomit. That is where his miracle started. And he wants to encourage everyone that with faith, nothing is impossible for God. That you should have faith in Jesus Christ, especially when the prophet touches you, just that touch, you are healed and delivered in Jesus' name. And for those who don't receive that touch, distance is not a barrier. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. So we can see some photographs beside you. Can you just explain? ¿Podrías explicar las fotografías del tablero? Sí. Bueno, esto era yo antes, para poder llegar a la escoba, no solo Dios pone el querer en el corazón, o sino que da sabiduría o da una puerta. Y Él me dio esta puerta para poder hacer, al, al, a comenzar a hacer de esta manera. Y de esta manera comencé a hacer y juntar el dinero para poder venir a la escoba. Y esto es con mi esposa, si estamos en una foto, después de, pasó el tiempo, nosotros nos casamos, hoy estamos sirviendo juntos, tenemos proyectos, sueños y, y seguimos para adelante, confiando en Dios. So he said that the photographs show his before and after. We can see where he is selling a chicken in, in the streets. This was something he was forced to have to do before, even as a pastor, to try and, and make ends meet. Uh, that was even how he managed to even raise money to come all the way to, to Nigeria, to the Synagogue Church for Nations. His condition before uh, was, was, was not a, a happy one in any uh, sense of the word. But now, after his deliverance and healing, he was able to get married. He has his own church. And we can see him here with his wife. He's happily married and they have a ministry together in Jesus' name. So we thank God for your life and we want to encourage you that now you've received that healing and deliverance and breakthrough through the name of Jesus, that you continue to stay close to him and keep his word in your heart to maintain this miracle in Jesus' name. Así que le damos gracias a Jesucristo por haberte dado esta maravillosa sanidad y bendición y oramos de que hagas el estándar, de, eh, la palabra de Dios, el estándar para tu vida, en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Doy gracias a Dios por todo lo que ha hecho y por todo lo que va a seguir haciendo. Amén. I thank God for everything. Amen. Nous venons de témoigner de cet homme qui nous vient de l'Argentine, qui s'appelle le pasteur Antonio. Il a commencé à nous raconter comment sa vie a été complètement affectée par un problème de malédiction familiale, de l'hypertension, qui a tué beaucoup de personnes dans sa famille. Et ça l'a affecté tellement au point qu'il pensait à la mort tout le temps. Même dans son ministère, il était accablé par les pensées de mort, car l'esprit de mort le poursuivait sans arrêt. Et un jour, il a découvert le ministère des prophètes TV Yosha sur Emmanuel TV. Il a prié un accord avec l'homme de Dieu en touchant l'écran. Il a été touché par l'onction du Saint-Esprit. Il a commencé à vomir. Alors il a commencé à penser plus clair. Il a, il a pris la résolution dans son cœur de venir ici dans l'arène de la liberté, croyant que l'homme de Dieu serait l'instrument que Dieu va utiliser pour le délivrer de cette malédiction générationnelle. Lorsqu'il est venu, l'homme de Dieu l'a touché. Il a dit qu'il n'a ressenti aucune émotion particulière. Il s'attendait à tomber, mais rien ne s'est passé. Mais lorsqu'il est rentré chez lui, sa vie a été transformée en une dizaine de jours. L'homme disait que l'hypertension a été enlevée complètement de sa vie. Il a été guéri. Avant, sa tension montait jusqu'à 16, 17, 18, ce qui était très dangereux. Lorsqu'il était allé faire des examens médicaux, on a réalisé que sa tension était normale 12 et 13. Et non seulement ça, lui qui n'était jamais marié, s'est marié maintenant, qui a une personne dans sa vie, il a une église et il a une montagne de prières, sa vie a été complètement transformée par le toucher de Dieu à travers l'homme de Dieu, le prophète Tibi Joshua. Le conseil qu'il donne à tous, la distance n'est pas une barrière. Priez en accord sur Emmanuel TV et croyez que Dieu va vous toucher, que la délivrance commence même chez vous, car la distance n'est pas une barrière. Ayez foi en Dieu, car en Dieu rien n'est impossible.